Dear students, I am Rekha Chaudhary. Welcome you all to the fourth session of Chapter 6, Life Processes of Class 10th Science. Students, did you know that urination is the process by which we eliminate waste materials from our body? Indeed, through urine, we are able to excrete several waste materials produced in our body through the process of excretion. Without this, we cannot lead a healthy life. This is what we will learn in this session. In this session, we will also learn about excretion in plants. The learning objectives of this session are to help you learn about and appreciate life processes in general and excretion in particular to help you learn about the excretory system in human beings, to enable you to understand the process of formation of urine, to help you understand the concept of excretion in plants, to help you relate the topics with your daily life. In the previous sessions, we have discussed about nutrition, respiration and transportation in organisms. We all obtain our nutrients from different sources which are later digested and metabolized in our body. After metabolic reactions, the body starts to sort out useful and toxic substances in an individual. Recall how carbon dioxide is removed as waste from the body through the lungs during exhalation. Also recall that the undigested food is removed during ejection. Let us now find out how other waste materials such as those circulating in the blood are removed from the body. You may wonder where these unwanted materials come from. When our cells perform their functions, certain waste products are released. These are toxic and hence need to be removed from the body. In this session, we will learn in detail how such waste products are removed from the body by the process called excretion, which is one of the life processes. Excretion is the process by which the waste products produced during metabolic activities is removed from the body. The waste products include ammonia, uric acid, urea, carbon dioxide and ions like chloride ions and phosphates and sulphate. Ammonia is the most toxic and uric acid is the least toxic. The process of removing ammonia is called ammonotelism and organisms that excrete ammonia are called ammonotelic. Examples are bony fishes, aquatic amphibians and insects. The organisms that release urea as nitrogenous waste are called ureotelic such as mammals and terrestrial amphibians. The organisms that excretes uric acids is called uricotelic. Examples include reptiles, birds and land snails. In unicellular organism, the waste products are removed from the cells into the surroundings by diffusion. In multicellular organisms, the waste products are removed through specialized organs. The different parts involved in excretion constitute the excretory system. The mechanism in which waste chemicals are removed from the body of the animal depends on the availability of water. Aquatic animals like fishes excrete cell waste as ammonia which directly dissolves in water. Some land animals like birds, lizards and snakes excrete a semi-solid white colored compound which is uric acid. The major excretory product in humans is urea. Did you know that Sweat is also a kind of excretory product. 
it contains salt and water. We have all experienced that we sweat on a hot summer day. We often find white patches in our clothes, especially in areas like underarms or back. These marks are left by salts present in the sweat. As we have mentioned, the waste which is present in the blood has to be removed from the body. How does this happen? To learn about this, we will discuss the human excretory system in detail. While diffusion is the most common process of excretion in lower organisms, human excretory system is an elaborate system where different parts are involved. Our body is an exceptional machine where different life processes such as respiration, circulation, digestion, etc. take place simultaneously. As a result, many waste products produced in our body are in various forms that include carbon dioxide, water and nitrogenous products like urea, ammonia and uric acid. In addition to these, the chemicals and other toxic compounds from medications and hormonal products are also produced. Simple diffusion is not sufficient to eliminate these wastes from our body. We need more complex and specific processes in order to eliminate waste products. The excretory system in humans consists of a pair of kidneys, a pair of ureters, urinary bladder and urethra. Kidneys are reddish brown bean shaped structure that are located in the abdomen, one on either side of the backbone. Each human adult kidney has a length of 10 to 12 centimeter, a width of 5 to 7 centimeter and weighs around 120 to 170 gram. The kidneys have an inner concave structure. Each kidney has a number of excretory units or filtration units called nephrons. They number nearly 1 million in each kidney. Nephrons are packed close together. A pair of thin muscular tubes called the ureter comes out of each kidney. Urine produced in the kidneys passes through the ureters into the urinary bladder. Urinary bladder is a muscular sac like structure which stores urine. The urinary bladder is emptied by the process called micturition that is the act of urination. Urethra is a tube that arises from the urinary bladder and helps to expel urine out of the body. In males, it acts as the common route for sperms and urine. As we mentioned earlier, each kidney has a number of excretory units or filtration units or functional units called nephrons. Let's explore the structure of nephron in detail. Each nephron has two parts, the glomerulus and the renal tubule. Glomerulus is a bundle of capillaries formed by the efferent arteriole, a fine branch of renal artery. The renal tubule begins with a double walled cup like structure called Bowman's capsule which encloses the glomerulus. The tubule continues further to form a highly coiled network initially and then into a hairpin shaped tubule. The tubules from many nephrons open into a straight tube called collecting duct as you can see in the diagram in your screen. Let us now discuss how urine is formed in the body. The purpose of making urine is to filter out waste products from the blood. Just as carbon dioxide is removed from the blood in the lungs, nitrogenous waste such as urea or uric acid are removed from the blood in the kidneys. Like in the lungs, 
the cluster of very thin walled blood capillaries or glomerulus present in the nephron are the basic filtration units in the kidneys. The renal artery brings the nitrogenous waste like ammonia, urea, uric acid along with excess water, salt, etc. into the nephron. Filtration takes place in the glomerulus. Glomerular filtration is the primary step in urine formation. In this process, the excess fluid and waste products from the kidney are filtered out of the blood into the urine collection tubules of the kidney and eliminated out of the body. The amount of filtrate produced by the kidneys every minute is known as glomerular filtration rate. The Bowman's capsule collects the filtrate. The filtrate passes through the tubular structure of the nephron and empties into the collecting duct. Some substances in the initial filtrate such as glucose, amino acids, salt and a major amount of water are selectively reabsorbed as the urine flows along the tube. The amount of water reabsorbed depends on how much excess water there is in the body and on how much of dissolved waste there is to be excreted. The urine forming in each kidney eventually enters a long tube, the ureter, which connects the kidney with the urinary bladder. Urine is stored in the urinary bladder until the pressure of the expanded bladder leads to the urge to pass it out through the urethra. The bladder is muscular, so it is under nervous control. As a result, we can usually control the urge to urinate. Have you heard the medical term dialysis? How it is related to the functioning of kidney? Let's find out. Kidneys are vital organs for survival. Several factors like infections, injury or restricted blood flow to kidneys reduce the activity of kidneys. This leads to accumulation of poisonous waste in the body which can even lead to death. In case of kidney failure, an artificial kidney can be used. An artificial kidney is a device to remove nitrogenous waste products from the blood through dialysis. Artificial kidneys contain a number of tubes with a semi-permeable lining suspended in a tank filled with dialysing fluid. This fluid has the same osmotic pressure as blood except that it is devoid of nitrogenous waste. The patient blood is passed through these tubes. During this passage, the waste products from the blood pass into dialysing fluid by diffusion. The purified blood is pumped back into the patient. This is similar to the function of the kidney, but it is different since there is no reabsorption involved. Do you know the amount of filtration taking place in our kidneys in a day? Normally, in a healthy adult, the initial filtrate in the kidneys is about 180 liter daily. However, the volume actually excreted is only a liter or two a day because the remaining filtrate is reabsorbed in the kidney tubules. Therefore, an adult human being normally passes about 1 to 1.8 liter of urine in 24 hours. The urine consists of 95% water, 2.5% urea and 2.5% other waste products. You must have heard the word kidney transplantation when the kidneys cannot function properly leading to renal failure and the available forms of treatment cannot help in the functioning of the kidneys, then the only option available to the patients is kidney transplantation. 
according to the directorate journal of health services ministry of health and family welfare government of india around 1.8 lakh persons suffer from renal failure every year in india however the number of renal transplants done is around 6000 only this is because of lack of kidney donors it is therefore encouraged to participate and pledge for organ donation which is a noble act that can save thousands of lives so far we have discussed about excretion in animals let's have a glance at excretion in plants and how excretion in plants is different from that of animals the cellular respiration photosynthesis and other metabolic reactions produce a lot of excretory products in plants carbon dioxide excess water produced during respiration and nitrogenous compounds produced during protein metabolism are the major excretory products in plants unlike human beings plants have no special organs for removal of waste they use completely different strategies for excretion than those of animals the waste products of respiration and photosynthesis are used as raw materials for each other oxygen gas produced as a by product of photosynthesis is used up during respiration and carbon dioxide produced during respiration is used up during photosynthesis the gaseous waste products produced during respiration and photosynthesis are removed through the stomata as well excess of water is also excreted from the plant body through the stomatal pores and from the surfaces of fruits and stems the process of elimination of water is called transpiration other than gaseous waste metabolism in plants also generates organic by products these waste are stored in different forms in different parts the gums oils latex resins etc are some waste products stored in the plant parts like barks stems leaves etc eventually plants shed off these parts the oil produced from orange eucalyptus jasmine latex from the rubber tree papaya tree and gums from acacia are different forms of stored waste products sometimes they even excrete into the soil excretion in aquatic plants takes place through diffusion so that is how excretion takes place in living organisms let us now have a quick recap of what we have discussed in this session we have learned that excretion is a process by which the waste products produced during metabolic activities is removed from the body the excretory system in humans consists of a pair of kidneys a pair of ureters urinary bladder and urethra each kidney has a number of excretory units called nephrons in human beings excretory products in the form of soluble nitrogen compounds are removed by the nephrons in the kidneys we also learn that plants use a variety of techniques to get rid of waste material for example waste material may be stored in the cell vacuoles or as gum and resin removed in the falling leaves or excreted into the surrounding soil before we conclude the session here is an assignment describe the structure and functioning of nephrons compare the functioning of alveoli in the lungs and nephrons in the kidneys with respect to their structure and function what are the methods 
used by the plants to get rid of excretory products. How is the amount of urine produced regulated? How is dialysis different from natural excretory process? I hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you very much.